Now, if you're watching yesterday, you'll know that we told you about the large numbers of younger COVID patients at the Royal Blackburn Hospital. That's set against a backdrop of rising demand for all services and huge staff shortages. That all adds to the pressure there. Well, in the latest in his series from inside the hospital, our health correspondent Jill Dummigan and cameraman Alex McCartney spent the day in the Royal Blackburn's emergency department. The pandemic's seen extra emphasis on infection control for all ambulances. So we wait for them to unload the patients and then they tell us whether it's a green or a red. Everything in that ambulance is clean, chairs, everything. So all the handles outside make it safe for the guys, yeah. A year ago, many people were staying away from A&Es, but over the past few months, Wendy's been increasingly busy. Like last night, we had about 15 that come in, boom, boom, boom. Then it'd be a bit quiet for half an hour, an hour, and then it swings and roundabouts, you know. A combination of people going out more, plus a rise in other infectious diseases in children, made this June the busiest on record for the Trust. We struggle because we're not staffed to see those numbers of patients. It's a struggle from a social distancing point of view. Um, and then the knock-on effects of all those patients attending is that those patients need ongoing treatment or might need admission. So there's an increase in bed weights because of the increase in patients attending. But while the workload's increasing, the number of staff is rapidly going down. This is my fourth day at work. Um... Because you've been off with COVID? Yeah, I've been off with COVID. Uh, I took isolate for about 10 days. And how yeah. are you feeling now? Uh, I feel all right. I feel OK now, yeah. Sickness and self-isolation rules mean staff are constantly having to fill in for colleagues who can't be there. I'm doing a lot of all the time at the moment, picking all the shifts up because we're, we're not able to get staff that we need. From day to day, we know that somebody's not coming in and we had to fill in some gaps. It's the same situation in critical care. Around 30% of the staff are currently unable to come in. But in the past few weeks, the number of beds has gone up by 50%. The whole of the original unit is now filled with COVID patients, so everyone else needing that level of care has been moved to a repurposed general ward. It just makes it look to be a little bit cramped. It makes moving things around a bit more difficult. It means you have to be much more vigilant about infection control procedures. So it just makes it all that a little bit more difficult. Jim Hindle's recovering from major surgery to remove bladder cancer, which was becoming life-threatening. Unfortunately, it spread to other parts and one of the kidneys as well. And um, so uh, they had to um, do a big operation to sort it out. So that sounds like a really major operation. Indeed, it was. And how are you feeling now? Well, fortunately, I'm feeling quite well now. It's unsafe to carry out major surgery without the option of a critical care bed, but because so many are now needed by patients with COVID, the number left for those without it has gone down by nearly two thirds. We have a finite number of beds and a finite resource. So every time a, a patient comes onto our COVID area, that takes away the potential for a bed in our non-COVID area to support our elective surgical programme. If you have a patient who stays on our COVID ITU for 10 to 14 days, which is fairly typical now, um, and you assume that a post-operative patient takes probably a couple of days of critical care, every patient who comes on to COVID potentially is affecting the chances for six or seven cancer patients getting their operation. Jim's been told he's now well enough to move to a general ward. So you must be feeling quite optimistic. Yes, I am optimistic and uh, can't wait to, well, Thank these people and get out and get home and get on with the work again. But with most restrictions gone, staff here are nervously eyeing the coming months. We're in the middle of summer. What do you think winter's going to be like? We're worried about winter, I'll be honest. We're making plans at the moment about what we can do to um, help with the winter. I'm nervous that people may feel that they don't need to worry about Covid anymore. The country's now moved from legal restrictions to personal responsibility. What happens here and in all the region's hospitals over the coming months will depend on what we all do next. Jill Dumigan, BBC Northwest Tonight, for the Royal Blackburn Hospital.